Welcome to another NRL video. I'm Glenn Schwartzberg and I'll be your host today for I didn't know I could do that in S-Base, specifically alias updates. So when dealing with an alias change in spreadsheets, we have a problem. If a user is using aliases in the spreadsheet and the alias names are changed, the user must manually update the aliases in order to get the spreadsheet to retrieve. If they don't do that, they'll either get a row with no information or they'll get a row that has the information that is associated before it. So a little bit of background information. We know that SBase allows for up to 32 alias tables. And that SmartView, at least starting with version 11.121.102, looks at all 32 of those alias tables when it's looking to try and determine a member name. Prior to that, it only looked at whatever the active alias table was. So for this to work, we actually need to be in 11.121.102 or higher. So what is the solution? Well, because we have 32 alias tables, we can copy the old aliases to a different alias table. We then use our new alias as the default alias table. So because most users use the default alias table, what will happen is when they retrieve the data in SmartView, the alias will change to whatever the new alias is. When they save their template, it will save it with the new names. Well, this is all well and good, but what happens if we have a lot of aliases to change? It can be a time-consuming process, especially if multiple alias tables are used. Now, I'll give you three solutions with my least favorite to my most favorite. There are certainly more options. I'm not going to be talking about XML export, for example, because it's a fairly new option. And there's, unless you use the Java API, you can't import them back in. So you can get them out using XML, you just can't get them back in. So what's my first solution? Well, what we can do is we can set SmartView to retrieve both the member name and the alias. We turn off indentation because we need everything to line up. We turn on navigate without data and we retrieve the hierarchy. We can retrieve a specific level like level zero or we could retrieve the whole hierarchy. We could then use a VLOOKUP to replace the alias name based on the member name in the rows. Save it as a text file and then write a load rule to update that particular alias table setting the alias table as active in the rule. You can have one alias table in a load rule, so we would have to do this for each different alias table that we want to update. So then we just reload the text file and the load rule. Now what you can also do is you can set the option in the load rule in the dimension build to uh, do not move and that way it'll still update the aliases it just won't move the members around now typically i only do this if i'm going to be updating one generation or one level at a time because it makes them much easier in the load rule the second solution is to use something like the outline extractor from applied olap tim toe was gracious enough to supply this as a free product that you can get and it'll extract the outline in either generation, level, or parent-child formats. And it will also extract it either into Excel, into a flat file, I should say, or into a relational database. Typically then, if I'm going into Excel, I'd use VLOOKUP to change the aliases. If I'm in a relational database, I'm going to use a query that's going to talk to another table in order to update the aliases. And just like the first option, I'm going to create a load rule to write those aliases back to the outline. Again, setting the uh, appropriate alias table as the active in the load rule. The third solution is what I like to do myself. And that's I can export the outline from the alias table to be changed. And I'll show you this in just a minute in the demo. 
You bring the exported aliases into Excel or into Relational Database. You update the aliases with a new name. You then import the alias table back to the outline. And then you repeat for the other alias tables. So it makes it very easy. Let's take a look at what we're going to be showing you in the video in just a minute. So if we look at exporting the alias tables, I have on the left the original names, and this is the exported file. I then copy that file to something that I'm calling old aliases. And if you look at the first row of that center table, alt underscore name is set to old names. So that's going to be my new alias table that's going to be containing the old names. I then created, on the right hand side, a new default table that has the new names. I can then import them back into the outline and save the outline. So let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to go into the properties and I'm going to go to my alias table and I'm going to export the alias table. In doing so, it's going to ask me which table I want to do and then where I want to put the table. So I'm just going to put them on my desktop on the file system. And in this case, I already have them out here, but I'm going to save it as default alt. And it always saves it with the .alt extension. So it just went ahead and saved it. So now we can go ahead and we can look at those alias tables, just like I showed you in the picture. So we've got to do a little bit of moving over. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to open it up with Notepad. And you can see here's all of my old aliases. I'll also show you, I also thought it was funny that in Sample Basic they spelled Sarsaparilla wrong. So we'll correct that as we go along as well. So here's my new alias table. And you notice that I have Zip and Zippy Colas. Um, I basically changed the names to add Zip or Zippy in front of them. And in addition, here's my old alias names table. So in this case, I have my original names in here. So it allows me to then re-import those. So that's what we're going to do in just a minute. As soon as I close everything down. So now all I have to do is come in here and say import. And I'm going to select first my new alias tables. So if we look out here, I've got default new. I'm going to select it, say OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my old names. Since it already existed, I have to tell it it's OK to overwrite it. So I'm going to now do this again for old names. So as we can see here, it's simply doing it. If I go back to the outline, then we can actually see the member names have been changed. If I expand out my products dimension, you can see I now have Zippy Colas and Zip Cola and all of those great other names down there. And so it changed those. If I go back and I change my alias, to be using my old names, it works as well. Now when I retrieve the data, you'll see very quickly that I will get the new names in my retrieval. So let's go ahead and connect into Smart View. Now I should mention I did save the outline in all of this. So if I expand out my products, And if I look at my old names, we'll see the original names in here for my alias. And I switched it to the new names and I got the new name. So it worked just like we expected it to.